Well, happy Thursday to you all. Hope that you're having a great day and that you woke up and you continue to be safe and you continue to be healthy and that you continue to grow in your relationship with the Lord. Thanks for joining me for our 10 o'clock devotion time. And I trust you will continue to grow in your love of God's word and your love of God who wrote it. Well, this morning we're going to be uh, continuing our series in the Who Was series. I'm not sure if you can see the references that I put on the screen before, but we're going to be in 2 Kings 22 and 2 Chronicles 34 and 35. Yesterday we talked about Huldah, and she was a prophetess who found the word of God in the temple, and she brought it to the king. Remember the king? His name was Josiah. So we're going to start with the, this morning we're going to start with Good King Josiah, who he was. So we found him in 2 Kings 22 and 2 Chronicles 34 and 35. Who was Good King Josiah? Well, Josiah inherited the throne and the kingdom when he was eight years old. Josiah was the last of the kings in the southern kingdom of Judah. Remember, Judah was part of Israel. Israel was one country or one nation under King David and then King Solomon. Once King Solomon passed away, his son Rehoboam, or David's grandson Rehoboam, he inherited the kingdom, and that kingdom split in 1 Kings chapter 12. Israel was on the north part, and then Judah was on the southern part. And the southern kingdom had good and bad kings. Josiah was the last of the good kings in the southern kingdom of Judah, because after Josiah passed away, Judah was taken into captivity in Babylon. Josiah's great-grandfather was King Hezekiah. We know King Hezekiah was a good king as well. So what did Josiah do? Well, it's pretty interesting that he was eight when he inherited the kingdom. Some of the things he did as younger, some of the things, most of the things he did once was once he inherited the scrolls and found the scrolls. So he was older. But I, I sat here and thought about this this morning, that he was eight when he inherited the kingdom. That's That's Hannah's age. Hannah would be an interesting queen. And that just really put it in perspective of me, for me, how young Josiah was. But Josiah, he instituted, he was known for instituting religious reforms once he read the scrolls and once he understood the sin that, that Judah was in, he made people stop and he reinstituted proper worship of God based upon the commandments or the law, the book of Deuteronomy. Some some commentators say that he had Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But whatever part of the of God's word he had, he took and he obeyed that. And then this revival that happened in the southern kingdom of Judah didn't stay there. It also went into the northern kingdom, and there was some revival in the northern part of the kingdom. And someone had to start a revival. And the point of a revival is to point people to the Lord. And Josiah used his influence for the glory of God and to bring people in a closer relationship with him. Uh, one promise that Josiah had would be that he would not see the destruction of his kingdom of Judah because when he was confronted with what was going on in the sin in his life, he had a tender heart towards the Lord. He had a broken and a contrite heart. He was not only sorry, but he repented and then he stopped doing wrong and then brought other people to that same spot using the word of God to be able to help people in their relationship with the Lord. Josiah was one of the strongest spiritual leaders. He was devoted. He was obedient. He was humble and he was repentant, not only for himself, but for his people. And one thing I've learned in leadership is the speed of the leader is the speed of the team. And so if Israel was going to be brought into a revival, it needed to start with the top person, the king. And Josiah, even though he was a king, he was humble enough to come under the leadership of the Lord and had that broken, contrite heart that was obedient to the word of God. And Josiah, he restored true worship to the Lord and, and in the temple. And then he went and he destroyed all of the false idols. He got rid of the false prophets and he got rid of the false priest that would lead people all in the wrong way of worship. And just think how much courage and strength that took for one person to stand up and say, this is what we're doing. This is what's wrong. And he got rid of everything that everyone was doing because it brought dishonor to the Lord. And he turned a nation to be able to follow 
in the ways of the Lord. Josiah, really what he did was he cleaned house. And if you've ever been in a leadership role, you know that that is difficult to do. It takes a lot of strength and courage. But once Josiah saw and he understood the word of God, he really wanted to follow that. And he made some hard decisions that were hard for the people to, to understand, but it brought glory and honor to the Lord. What was Josiah's sorrow? Uh, what his sorrow was, was that his reforms that he made, the changes that he made and the changes he instituted were not supported by those that followed him under his kingly reign. So when he passed away, the leadership changed and the direction changed. And then Judah would be taken into captivity by Babylon. And that would be sorrowful, sorrowful for Josiah to to have happened, but remember, he never saw that. That was the promise that God gave him that as long as Josiah was alive, Judah would remain out of captivity because Josiah was a good king. That's why we call him Good King Josiah. Unfortunately, one thing we learned from Josiah as I was studying this is you can't change people. The old saying, you can lead a horse to water. You can even put salt on the horse's tongue. You can force the horse horse's head down into the stream but the horse has got to want to drink. Now don't misapply that. We can, I'm not calling people horses, but we can take people to the word of God. We can tell them their need for the word of God. We can help them understand the word of God, but until they desire to have that change, they're not going to change. And Josiah tried to bring that change and it worked while he was there. Unfortunately, it didn't continue when he was uh passed away and rest in peace. So Josiah, he did use his influence to change his life, and he did the best that he could to point people towards God using the word of God. So our challenge this morning from our Thursday morning devotions is Josiah promised to follow the Lord's commands. I'd encourage you to read 2 Kings 22, especially Josiah made this covenant with the Lord. He says, as long as I'm here, I'm going to follow your ways. I'm going to follow your words. I'm going to follow your statutes. And he made that promise to follow the Lord's commands. My question for you this morning is, what would it take for you to make that same promise and follow the Lord's commands? What would it take for you to be desiring to read God's word and to start circling promises, underlining, highlighting promises and saying, this is something that I'm going to do. This is the command of God and something I'm going to promise to do. If there's something I could do to help you out, please reach out. If you need to know some promises of God, I can certainly send you some. Reach out, call, text uh, through Messenger. Would love to continue to help each one of us grow in our relationship with the Lord. I hope you have a great Thursday. <clears throat> I'll see you tomorrow morning for the next part of the Who Was series. Have a good and godly day.